In this video, I'm going to show you how to create photorealistic HDR images using your digital SLR and Photoshop CS6. Adorama TV presents Take and Make Great Photography with Gavin Hoey, where you'll learn how to take stunning photos and then polish them in post-production. Here's your host, Gavin Hoey. Hello, I'm Gavin Hoey and you're watching Adorama TV. Now, in this video, I'm going to have a look at HDR photography. HDR, short for High Dynamic Range. Now, HDR has a very bad reputation for having some pretty over-the-top effects. Not going to be doing that today. Today, I'm going to be looking at fairly straightforward processing where your camera just can't quite see enough in one single picture. In other words, you have blocked up shadows or burnt out highlights. And we're going to have a look at a couple of different ways you can achieve that with your SLR camera. Now, if you want to find out more about HDR photography, don't forget to check out the Adorama Learning site where there's plenty of information for you to read and enjoy. So I'm going to start here with the Canon 5D Mark III and a pretty wide angle lens. Now, if I take a single shot of this scene and I just put the camera into aperture priority mode and we'll just choose something like F8 and we'll choose an ISO where well, it's pretty dark in here, but nonetheless, we're on a tripod so we can use 100 ISO. And that gives me a picture that is, well, it's not very good, really. The shadows are very, very dark. The highlight is completely blown out. That's a bad photo. And that's the problem with single shot images. When you have a scene where your camera can't see in the shadows and can't see in the highlights, HDR comes to the rescue. So one thing you can do is to put this into auto exposure bracketing, AEB. And by putting it into AEB mode, I can ask this camera not to take one photo, but to take three photos. So I'm going to ask it to take three photos that are two stops apart. I'm going to use a little remote trigger for this because some of these exposures are going to be quite slow. One, two, and the long one, three. And when I look at those three pictures, I can see that I've got a picture where there is a little bit more detail in the shadows and a picture where there is a little bit more detail in the highlights. Now I can use a bit of software to combine these together and there are plenty of bits of software out there. Photomatix, Photoshop CS5 and CS6, Nick HDR, just a few of them you could try. Now with modern cameras like this 5D Mark III, you can actually process your HDR pictures right here in camera. All I need to do is just turn that feature on and enable the HDR and I can choose to take two stop images and it'll take three two stop images or at least two stops apart. It'll take a moment or two but it'll process that in the camera and on the back of the screen I can actually see the finished HDR. It's not bad but it's not as good as we can do by using the the other methods of outside processing and particularly when you have a scene with a higher dynamic range than we've got here and we're going to get in the very next bit of the video. So I've moved up to the, the cockpit of the Shackleton here at the Gatwick Aviation Museum and now the dynamic range is huge. I mean, if I just take a single shot, just look at this. Look, if I take one shot here, um, I can see that the, the, the windscreen here, the, uh, the cockpit, I can see white. I can't see outside at all. And yet the, the shadows are totally black. This is where HDR really comes into its own. And what we're going to look at is a system called 32-bit HDR inside of Photoshop in just a bit. But to get to a 32-bit HDR, I need to take multiple images. Now, there's a couple of ways I can do this. This 5D Mark III will allow me to do auto exposure bracketing for up to seven images at two stops apart. So I can simply go to my menu, dial in the auto exposure bracketing for up to seven images and just let, take the shots. Five, six, seven. And you can hear how the shutter speed is changing from one shot to the next. And that gives me a range of images that is absolutely massive. Now in theory, that should be enough. But what if you don't have a seven stops of, uh, of exposure compensation, auto exposure bracketing? What could you do instead? Well, the option there is simply to switch to manual mode. So I'm just going to switch into M for manual. I'm going to dial in a shutter speed, not an aperture. I'm going to leave my aperture alone at F8. That's never going to change. But I'm going to dial in a shutter speed right the way up to maximum. Eight thousandth of a second. And I'm going to take a shot. 
Now at eight thousandth of a second, I'm going to get basically a black shot with just a little hint of something in the, uh, the highlights. Now I'm going to change my shutter speed to half what it is before. So it was eight thousand, doesn't need a, a mathematician for that one, that'll be a four thousandth of a second. And I'm getting a little bit more in the highlights. And I'm going to continue halving my shutter speed and taking photos. Now this will give me one stop less exposure from picture to picture. And if you're really doing your HDRs properly, then the closer you can keep your, your images, your individual exposures, the better your HDR will be. And eventually we start getting down to some really slow shutter speeds like one second, two seconds, down to four seconds. And at four seconds, all I'm really getting is a white picture. So I can stop there. So that's a couple of different ways you can shoot HDR. But what I'm gonna do now is to get these pictures into Photoshop and make my HDR image there. So this is what we're heading towards. We're heading towards a beautiful HDR image with detail in the highlights, detail in the shadows, but no kind of crazy funky image effects. Now I'm gonna use Mini Bridge here in Photoshop CS6, and it's worth stressing, if you want to do a 32-bit HDR here in Photoshop, you have to have Photoshop CS6. I'm gonna use these seven shots that I did on auto exposure bracketing. I could have used the one with more pictures, but for my needs, this seven is absolutely perfect. Now, what I'm gonna do is make a bit more space so we can see what's going on. I'm gonna right click on any of the images and choose Photoshop, Merge to HDR Pro. So this is the HDR bit of software that's built into Photoshop CS6 and it'll gather together all seven images, line them all up and prepare a 32-bit, 16-bit or 8-bit HDR. It just takes a moment or two to get there. But here we are. So this is the standard view when you're making a normal 16-bit HDR image and you've got all the toys to play with. You can go and do some kind of really crazy, over-the-top, dramatic-looking HDR effects. Ooh, okay, that's not what I want from today. I want a, an effect that's much more photographically real. So rather than make a 16-bit, I'm going to change the mode to 32-bit. That gets rid of, well, pretty much everything, and you're left with this little histogram and one slider that just seems to make it, well, worse, really. And it doesn't matter where you, you put that slider. You can literally put it anywhere you like. All you're going to do is choose 32-bit and click OK. Now, it might look worse, but here's the answer to what's going on. A 32-bit image has so much data that Photoshop can't display it. It's too much to see. However, there is one program that I know can handle 32-bit, and it's called Adobe Camera Raw. So first of all, we need to save this. So let's go to File, Save As, and we'll change the format from Photoshop to TIFF, and then click Save. Now this needs to be a 32-bit file, which it is because we've made it a 32-bit, and click OK. Now that's going to take a moment to save because this is a huge file, and I do mean huge. 250 megabytes, maybe maybe more. Okay, so let's close that down, and then we'll go and find that TIFF file. I put it back in the same folder, so it should be here it is in Mini Bridge. Now I'm going to right-click it, choose Open With, and I can open it in Camera Raw. So I can bring the TIFF file into Camera Raw, and it looks like a raw image, and I've got all of raw control here as well. But have a look, it's subtly different. For example, exposure. I can take the exposure down to minus 10, where normally I could go to minus 5, and at the other end I can go to plus 10, where again I would normally go to plus 5. So I've got 20 stops of exposure latitude here. Amazing amount. Okay, let's do some basic editing. Let's just take the highlights and bring them down. We'll bring the shadows and open them up, and we get a pretty good picture. Now I can bias the exposure towards the highlights by bringing it down a wee bit, so that gives me a bit more highlight detail, and that allows me to open up the shadows a little further, like that, and we can just pull up the blacks a little as well. So that looks pretty good. Of course I've got my other tools here, like clarity and a bit of vibrance just to give it a bit more colour, and I can do things like getting the straighten tool and just straighten along the top just to make sure everything is nice and straight. I've got my more advanced tools. I could go and apply adjustment brushes and graduated filters. 
or I can go and have a close look here and see, well, there's a bit of chromatic aberration. Um, actually, there's, there's a lot of chromatic aberration. That's, that's quite a bit there. Well, these things do tend to happen with HDR. But I can come over to Lens Corrections, and I can come to the Color tab, and turn on Remove Chromatic Aberration. That's almost gone. There's a hint left. So let's defringe the purples a little bit more, and they're gone. And there you go, that is one very clean, very neat HDR. Look at all the texture that's coming through on this image. If you didn't know it was an HDR and you didn't understand how these things work, you'd be forgiven for thinking it's just an ordinary photograph because there's so much detail here. But look, detail in the windows. Look at all that condensation and detail into the deep, deep shadows. Even in the deepest, darkest shadows, I can see what's going on. That's what an HDR is all about. So all I have to do now is to click on Open Image, and we can leave RAW behind, and we'll come back into Photoshop. And there it is, my 32-bit HDR image completed. I'm Gavin Hoey. Thanks for watching. Adorama TV is brought to you by Adorama, your best source for the equipment and knowledge you need. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit Adorama.com. Place your order by 7 p.m. and it ships the same day. Plus, the next time you're in New York City, be sure to visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue. Check out the Adorama Rental Company for professional cameras, lighting, computers, and more. We'll help you make the best selection to match your needs while giving you the knowledge to achieve the best outcome from your rental. Adorama is your complete solution for equipment, printing, training, and more. Adorama, more than a camera store.